So this is episode 60 of the Hashtag I Am Who I Am podcast. I am your host, Chad Rob. Um, I didn't even hear play in the background, but you see it, man. We're trying to do our thing over here, and I have a return guest with me, ladies and gentlemen, to start off the year. Yes, sir. Um, when I first jumped this podcast off, man, I went into it just knowing the basics, like how to upload it to platforms, how to shoot it, how to record it, but not how to actually make it good and quality and all that, you know? And uh, was on a trip to Florida. No, it was Georgia. Georgia. Scott, there's a beach in Georgia. I forgot that, man. I forgot that. I keep forgetting that. So so we we on our way to Georgia, and uh, I carry all my equipment. Well, you would think we was recording a platinum album. <laughs> You thought we would record a platinum album. You thought we would have took it back on them to them rapping days. But uh, so I bring it down, man. Let me tell you when none of it worked except the actual camera. And that's it. The mic hanging. We didn't even get the mic audio, right? We didn't get the mic audio. This is episode two, ladies and gentlemen. That's how long my man jumped down. He didn't care if I knew what we were doing or not. He was, he was riding. Ready to go. Ready to go. So for the people that may not know who I'm talking about, if you ain't seen episode two of the hashtag I am who I am podcast, gotcha. hey, let them know, man. Let them know who you are, cuz. What's up, good people? It's your boy Tom Paul Shotty, coming straight from the A-Town. What's happening? Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Back again with my fam. That's what's... Half of uh, CNC Sports. That's coming back to y'all. Hey. Coming back. hey, it's coming back real soon. Y'all need to check that out, man. We was doing our thing when that pandemic started, man. We was bringing little sports to the people. We was getting them views and stuff, them hits. Yeah, we got to get back to work on that. Sports kicked us out the door. We still kicking it back in. Yeah, we got to get back to work on that for sure, for sure, for sure, man, for sure. So, um, (laughs) so with this new year starting, first thing I want to do, because I don't want to start negative in the new year. 2021, man, we don't want to start with any hurt or pain or negativity. I'm going to put it on the screen what I'm showing. But people say you're supposed to write down your goals on paper and what you want. I don't know if you can see that, Tall. Yes, but sir. it basically breaks down a million dollars. Like if you made a million dollars a year, if you and then it breaks it down what you would make a month, what you would make a week, and what you'd make yeah. a day. I'm going to put it on the screen so y'all can see it too. Yeah. Um, Dude, write down your goals. Make, make sure that's, that's after taxes. After you well, we ain't, well, see, Tal, you see, you're going back, ne- you know, not negative, but you're going back hurtful, like with pain. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You got, you got to pay your taxes. Hey, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. But, uh, but yeah, so write down your goals, man. Write down your goals. So I know as a kid, you had goals. Yeah, yeah, all the time. All the time. My my number one goal that I, I would write down in school, at home, when I was just, you know, listening to music and doing homework was go to the NBA. Go to the NBA. And my mom was always saying, hey, you know, achieve your dreams, but get your education and go to church and all that, which, you know, you got to do also. And I also, always did, but it was just always... I wanted to go to the NBA. I wanted to play professional basketball. And I even wrote that down when I was in college. You know, and then finally, you know, accomplished that goal. Played pro ball for five years. I got to live my dream. And now I'm living my other dream, being a, a daddy and a husband. You know, so, I mean, you know, life is great, man. That's life what's up. Great. That's what's up. So talk to me a little bit but, uh, before the NBA. Um, I know you said you from, where, where are you from? Southwest Atlanta, from the SWATs. That's what's you know, up. West Side, you know, Martin Luther King, Bankhead, Cascade. You know, so shout out to the neighborhood. Uh, then went 3,000 miles away to Pepperdine University. Pepperdine? You what? So, what, hold on. Where is Pepperdine University at? So for those that don't know, it's in Malibu, California, where they used to film Baywatch. And you used to see all the folks running up and down the beach in the little bikinis and stuff, man. So I just wanted to change the scenery. And I went all the way out there to go play college ball, man. Really? Noise, make really? Noise, you know? Man, so the first time I ever even heard of Pepperdine was when they were playing UT. Um, 
That's when UT had, I think, Slade. That's when they had their first good team, like, trying to get good at Because now we're cold in basketball. And UT Vols ain't playing <laughs> in basketball. But that's when we was on the road to where we're at now, right? Yeah. And uh, I remember them playing Pepperdine. And I remember this real tall dude blocking all the shots with an afro, too. I think he had an afro. I can't remember exactly. And I was like, man, who is this guy, man? So, so uh, to kind of, you know, I don't know, man. We got to jump right into it. So, yeah. Uh, That's funny you mentioned Slade because I played with Slade in the D League. Well, it's, now it's the G League. But Ron Slade, real good dude. We won a championship in the D League. In Asheville, North Carolina, so that's still my guy to this day. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, both of y'all had what I would like to call great coaches. Yeah, yeah. I would like to say that. I would like yeah, to say that. Coach. Both of y'all did, you know. Great um, coach. I, knew, I was more familiar with, uh, was that Kevin? That wasn't, uh, not Kevin O'Neill. Was it Kevin O'Neill that year? Well, that? Kevin O'Neill recruited me uh, when I was coming out of high school in 97. And then he ended up leaving to go to Northwestern, I think, that next year. So, you know, but... Uh, I can't yeah, remember I, who I UT there. coach was that, that was year. Was after, right after you remember Kevin, Kevin O'Neill. I can't remember. I can't remember. I thought it was Kevin O'Neill. But uh, you had a coach, man, um, at Pepperdine. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, that's how we started this year. You know, last yeah. year, 2020, it was Kobe. Yeah. And then this year... It's uh, Paul Westfall. Paul he was Westfall. My, he was actually, yeah, Paul was a coach. He was my third coach. So I got recruited by Lorenzo Romar. Um, and, you know, he was there for a couple of years. And then we brought in another coach, Jan Van Bredekoff, during my next two years and went to the tournament and stuff. And then my senior year, uh, you know, we were all wondering who the next coach was going to be. This has been my third coach in five years because I registered my first year. And when they said it was Paul Westfall, like, I was like, whoa. Like, we were really trying to we really trying to do some things and make some moves. And, <clears throat> you know, like you said, unfortunately, we lost him uh, to his battle to brain cancer. Uh, and, you know, at the very beginning of this year, just a couple of days ago. And so, you know, that, that one hit home because he's the one who really gave me my chance uh, allowed me to be a leader, a captain of the team, and uh, really gave me the confidence to lead. I ended up winning Defensive Player of the Year in the conference, uh, led the, the conference in block shots, was one of the top in the country, went to the NCAA tournament, and, you know, he was just, just overall a great dude, he, aside from coaching, just a great guy, and so... I'm going I'm to really miss him. Uh, he's, he's hands down one of the greatest coaches I've ever had. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. I uh, I know when we originally were supposed to – see, we did this podcast already for those that may not know out there. We did episode tw- 60. This is episode 60B. So you'd have to find the lost tapes to see the original. Um, and, uh, and I remember I asked you, you know, hey, man, we can reschedule it. Uh, we can do whatever we need to do because I know how you feeling. And you was yeah. like, no, nah, we need to we need to get this out there. So that's, man, you know, rest in peace, Coach uh, Westfall. And, yeah. uh, like, I just hope that ain't a sign of what's to come in 2021 as far as just all the pain. Because 2020, that's the, that's the whole reason for this episode, too, is to kind of give some good and talk about what really and happened. Like, and, and, and what? What, Coach? passing at the very beginning of the year taught me was man like and, and, you know when I told you hey we ain't got to reschedule let's go let's keep going because regardless of what what day it is of the year you know it could have been December 31st or January 1st it could be tomorrow you know we always throughout our lives unfortunately lose people we love who we appreciate and who enjoy being around. And so for those of us who are still able to be here, we just got to keep pushing and keep trucking along. That's what those people will want us to do. And I'm a stern believer in that. So we just keep going, man. Yes, sir. Keep going. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, um, well, you already know if you need me, man. I'm I'm wherever you at. Always. And I'm I'm on throughout. You know know how far it is. You know how far it is. Um, (laughs) 
But uh, so kind of speaking to like kind of coaching and, and mentoring and kind of just, you know, being a big brother or a, a, just a role model, a mentor, whatever you want to call it to a person, man. This guy, this guy, Tall Paul, man. Cedric Sewitt. That's, what, that's, what, that's your government name, man. Yeah, that's a government name. That's a government name. That's a government. Uh, <laughs> I let you, you family, so I let you use my government name. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man, so like you can't let we had a mishap i messed up i'm 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 over here working working to get it done i make a mistake my brother says it's all good let's redo it yeah. first time i met him was in a he was a he was a coach when i met him he was a coach uh you know a, a leader when i met him that's how i was introduced to you right right you see what i'm saying and uh i made a lot of mistakes I made a lot of mistakes, but you was like, as a good coach. Hey, hey. You, gotta, you gotta fight through it. You gotta it's, learn from, from it and keep pushing. So the first mistake I made, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> is, when I, is when I met him, right? <laughs> so as a as a young whippersnapper out here in these streets, man, I made it, I had just made it to 25 or was about to turn 25. I, I had beat the, the statistics, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Black man, baby, 25. That's when I met him. Yeah. And uh, and uh, I never forget, man. I walk in the office, and where I'm from, I'm from Maryville, Tennessee. That's where I'm living. And uh, <laughs> and where I'm from, we don't see people that look like this gentleman. We don't see people that look like me often. You know what I'm saying? We don't, it just don't happen, right? And uh, make a long story short, man. I walk in the, the the office. I can't remember if I was coming back from lunch or if I was. If I was uh, just yeah, coming to work, because you were gone. Yeah, some, yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I don't remember, you know. And I come in, you know, all hype, you know. I don't know what I was feeling. Twenty five, ain't no telling what was going on in my head, right? And I come in, I see this tall brother, clean cut, good looking dude, man. <laughs> tall. I said, woo. I said, what? I said, I said, who? I, I said, I tapped my homeboy TJ, man. You remember TJ? Yeah, yeah. yeah I tapped TJ. I said, man, who, who is that right up? And uh, he said, "Yes, I knew. Uh, yes, I knew. Yes, I knew, boss." I said, "Okay, <laughs> okay." That's so I'm so I'm smiling ear to ear at this time, Ken, folks. It's like we got a group. <laughs> hey, I, I'm about to. Hey, we did it. <laughs> we did it. I'm about to make it finally, right? And uh, so I go in there. You introduce yourself like you just tall. You you get up because you were sitting. Yeah. So maybe I don't know you were tall yet. Maybe yeah, I don't so, know, because I think you were sitting when I walked yeah, in. Walked in. I was. Yeah, and I walk in, and I'm like, yeah, you know, you know, chair ride, right, whatever, whatever. I was on 25, I'm young dude, right? <laughs> Talking to the boss. I'm like, shoot, he a brother. He know what I'm talking about, man. He understand corporate gar- jargon, right? He understand corporate jargon, right? And he, he stand up, and hit me with that same mannerism as uh, any other boss I've ever had. And he said, hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm Cedric Seward. <laughs> I'm Cedric Seward, you know, I'm the, you know, uh, from boom, boom, boom. So in that conversation, he says where he's from. He's he's coming from. He says, I'm coming, I'm coming from Nashville. Come from Nashville. And I said, Nashville? Shoot, that's where I was born and raised, man, you know? I mean, I did my thing out there. And uh, he said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's where my wife from. I said, oh, your wife? I said, I said, I said well, who's your wife? <laughs> This first day, ladies and gentlemen. This first, this not even ten minutes. I don't think we've been talking ten minutes. Because I told you what, what we started talking about church, and I told you what church I went to. Yeah. And that's when it was like, it was like, yeah, you know, it's my wife's church. I'm like, oh yeah, who's your wife? Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's right. See, I'm having this love. It's a little vague, ladies and gentlemen. Be patient with me. Be patient with me. We gonna, we got a, we got a story. Trust me. So, so. Anyway, so I'm hyped about his wife now. I ain't gonna get hyped about it like that again. But then I'm hyped about it. Well, I ain't really understand a man and wife and all that back then. 25, ladies and gentlemen, 25. And uh, I get hyped about his wife. Who's your wife? <laughs> Look at his face. Look at that's exact. It was worse than that, though. It was worse than that. Because now we. It was terrible. Because it couldn't keep a straight flight. Because, you know, we. We're literally just meeting for the first time. This is an introductory meeting, 
And so I'm like, yeah, it's my wife's church. Um, but it's her family church, her whole family goes in. It's like, oh, yeah. And, and just, just nonchalantly, just like, hey, what's your wife's name? I said, Danielle. His head turned, Ted head turned, like, Danielle Thomas? <laughs> Man, <laughs> you lucky. I said, what? Excuse me? No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. This is exactly how we were working. No, I ain't mean like that, cuz. No, no, no. Don't disrespect me. He's like, oh, because I can see it in his eyes. I'm like, I'm finna lose my job. No, you got, you got a good one, boy. Boy, you got a good one. Man, me and her brother, best friends, then he just did it. <laughs> hey, I hit a left and ran, started running. Hey, I used to be fast. Don't let everybody tell you I went fast now, back in my days. Like, you in the burning building. You got to get the hell out. <laughs> <laughs> brother, brother Chris, that was my boy. That was my best friend. And then we started talking about Chris. And yeah. Then, then it was, yeah, man. Emergency diverted. <laughs> <laughs> man, when I tell you. When I tell you, I'll never forget it. <laughs> I'll never forget it because it was uh, it was the first moment when I understood what a what a man's woman <laughs> means to him. Because Me <laughs> I'm still on that play play. I'm 25, yeah, ladies. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I did not understand. I did not understand. But he. He still held me down, man. I'm sure he went home and 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 and, and laughed about oh, it. Oh man. About oh it. man. Wait, wait, you remember that Christmas? It was either Christmas or Thanksgiving in Atlanta when you came and we told yeah. a story to her and everybody else. Now that's a story too. We could <laughs> go into that. That's a story. Hey, hey ladies and gentlemen, for those of y'all who don't know, and, and this is how like close Chad is to my family and to me. When he was little, hanging out with my with my brother in law Chris, who man, me and Chris and Phil, we we were like brother, bro. We don't even call each other brother in law. Chad then tried to steal. Well, not try to steal. He was playing around in my father in law's car. It was a vintage. Whoa, whoa, whoa! They gotta pay for that story. <laughs> they gotta pay for that story. <laughs> yeah, hey, 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 I, hey, I, hey, I've been, I've been low key my whole life. I've been a beast. I've been a beast my whole life. Don't never let nobody tell you otherwise. But you got to pay for that. Them stories, you got to pay for that. Yeah, we ain't getting paid yet, baby. I showed you the list. I'll put it up again. A million dollars, uh, whatever dollars. You see the you see the breakdown. So, yeah, y'all got to pay for that. So, the first time you was on the podcast, as, as, as you know, ladies and gentlemen, if you're tuned in, that it has evolved. And uh, before we had a, but me and you had a strategy, though. Going into the yeah. second one. We did have a game plan. We yeah. were prepared everywhere but with the, just to have done it. The execution. Yeah, the execution. We just hadn't never done it. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And before then, you know, I didn't, I wasn't asking top five rappers of all time. Oh. I wasn't asking. Oh. I wasn't asking. But oh. since, since, since we don't know yours. Oh. <laughs> since we don't know yours. Oh. What I need to know is your top five rappers of all time. That's what I need to know. All right, top five all time. All time, yours though. Not no, not no. Who's the most popular? Based off of popular. Your homeboy, best one. No, no, no. It's uh, just like if I'm gonna listen to any five people, go at it. Who you pick? Uh, all right, so of course, being from Atlanta, I got three stacks. Andre 3000. One or five? I, I put stacks number number two. Mm. Okay. I put stacks okay. number two. I didn't see if that. If I got to do them in order, I'll go number five is Snoop Dogg. Okay. Number four is Eminem. Eminem popular on the podcast, though. I ain't going to lie to you. He's popular. Number four is Eminem. <laughs> number three is Jada Kiss. So Jay bars, 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 and I could I could flip him and Styles P back and forth, but I'll take Jada. But hands down, Jada will murder anybody in the game. Really? Except for, except for I think Eminem, who is a monster. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to have no rap battles against him. Number two is is Dre, and my number one who like really got it all started for me is Ice Cube. America's most wanted. You number one. You. That's a first. That's a first. You. Number you one. Tell you why? Because when he went solo and came out with America's Most Wanted, I was in the sixth grade, and my cousin. I was going into the sixth grade from the fifth grade, but I just got to the sixth grade when my cousin dubbed me the tape. This is how mm. old I am, because I had the red Sony Walkman, and I used to listen to it every day. So one day I'm riding to school, I'm just jamming out, and then one of my partners who used to ride to school with me was like, hey man, going to put the tape in, in the tape deck so we can all hear it, Cedric. And I was like, hey man, I should slap you right now, but I'm not going to do that. And my mama was like, yeah, put it in. So I popped the tape in. I, I was like, I was about to cry. So I popped the tape in. First song, come on. He was like, God damn, I'm glad y'all set it up. My mama ejected the tape and almost threw it out the window on 285, taking us to school. See, so, so ladies and gentlemen that may not know, <laughs> like for you youngsters that may not know a tape, there used to be a, a, a cassette. Something looked similar to the phone, that size. It was the size of the phone. I used to put it in the machine. And hit play, and when it got to the end, you have to flip it over and put it back in so you can play the B-side. Unless you had a favorite song, and you, hit, you stop, you rewind. And you knew how to rewind to the exact spot that you needed to almost almost 100% of the time. That's how, that's how real we were. But back then, you could eject that tape and throw it out the window. Out the window. <laughs> now, y'all so lucky. Like... <laughs> Because ain't nobody throwing no phone out the window. That's how where it's coming from. Or it's on the radio. So you can either change the station. That's it. And get cussed out. And you had to hear That's it the it. whole time. That's it. Or throw your, the phone you bought out the window. Boy, and, and so ever since then, like, he been, he, been, he been number one, man. Number one. Today was a good day. It was dope, too. Didn't oh, even eat what? no hog, no small. Oh. Oh, no, mama even cooked the Classic. breakfast with no hog. My bad. Yeah, that's my Classic. bad. Yeah, that's my bad. Classic. Man, so kind of back to basketball, uh, you know, like 2020 was rough. Um, so we got to kind of talk about it, man. I uh, With Westfall, with Coach Westfall just dying, we've got to talk about John Thompson. The reason why I say that is when I was a kid, Georgetown was my team. They, I mean, Georgetown was was everything, right? You know, and I remember like the first basketball sports movie I think I saw it was either the program or Above the Rim, the first bat the first sports oh. movie I saw. I can't remember which one it was, but it was either the program or Above the Rim. But I remember in Above the Rim, the whole goal, the whole dream, the whole everything was to get to Georgetown. Get to Georgetown. Yep. And the cool thing about that was at Georgetown there was this black coach. He was yeah. black. I don't know that I had ever seen a black coach pass Pop Warner at the time I saw these movies. You see what I'm saying? And yeah. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I, I, I really believe that. And uh, we lost him in 2020. And yeah, man. That was another tough one. Uh, that was another tough one. And, and, you know, being a big man, like I'm 6'11", right? Okay. Like, you, you know... I'm sure you love Georgetown, the AI. Dad, what do you mean? I mean, AI, AI got me watching it. It was the coach, then AI. <laughs> I mean, AI, I remember when Georgetown used to play Georgia Tech. Him and Marlboro had it, dog. What's crazy about that, that you say that, is I remember being in Florida on a, on a school trip, and I bought the AI jersey and the Marbury jersey just because of how real the competition was. That was a monster. I remember that. I remember but you know, that. being a big man, like I'm six eleven. Being a big man, Georgetown was the the school of of gods for big men. When you think of Georgetown, you think Patrick Ewan, Kim Bay, Alonzo Mourning. So these are all like bigs who just had Hall of Fame bigs who have dominated the league at some point in time. Yeah, and I'll never forget the first time I met him. I was at an AAU tournament. Sonny Vaccaro, who was 
one of the heads of uh, Adidas at the time introduced us. And whenever John Thompson would talk, you have to listen. He was what, 6'10". Like, and he was a big man. So hold up, hold up. John Thompson was tall like that? Yes. I thought he was about 6'5", 245. No, 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 no. No, no. Like, he was, uh, he, it was just his presence. Like, he's 6'10", he's big. And he had this voice that would literally talk through you. Wow. Like, you could feel it when he talked to you. Wow. And he was, he was, it was amazing. Like, I was just in awe. You know, I'm a 17-year-old kid, and I'm sitting here talking, 16, 17 years old, and I'm talking to John Thompson. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what to wow. say. All I was, yeah, coach. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. The whole conversation, he was, you know, just telling me, Hey, you know, giving me little pointers and tips. I'm just staring at him like, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that was a, that's, that was that's, that's, that's That's dope, too, because uh, John Thompson don't get a lot of credit. Um, but he saved AI, man. Like, he saved him. Like, we wouldn't have no AI without John Thompson. No, AI said it in his Hall of Fame. Yeah, not, yeah I'm, just, I'm saying as a fan. Tears flowing down his eyes. AI said, word for word, you saved my life. A coach saved his life. Man, that's hard, man. That's hard, man. That's that's hard. And so since we do it, let's 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 do the let's do the stuff that kind of get you teary eyed and emotional first. So first thing I mentioned it a little bit earlier. First thing off the wham, we lost Kobe. Dude, I 2020, man. Ladies and gentlemen. So I got a I got a text message because you know being out there and me and Bean well Kobe when when we were young in uh, high school the same time I met John Thompson was when I met Kobe and so mm. introduced him. So so I don't mean to cut you off. So just in no, case no. I I didn't I didn't ask the proper question. I need I need I'm trying to be a good host. You know no. I'm trying to get better since episode two to sixty. You feel me? <laughs> So, so all of this is the all of this is the recruiting process. This is what this is how you meet these these gentlemen. So it was at an AAU tournament in oh, Vegas with Kobe. Well, well, Kobe wasn't playing though. He was about to get drafted. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. So what about John Thompson? He was recruiting. He was recruiting. That's what I thought you said. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure everybody know what's going on. Yeah, Why? Coach. How you speaking to all this? That's, that's all Coach, I wanted to know. Coach was recruiting because I was one of the top big men in the country at the time. I was I was on the way up. That's what's up. Yeah, because you were 16. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. And so, you know, Sonny was like, look, I want you to talk. I want you to meet somebody, uh, talk to the guy, because there were, there was, like, whispers, like, hey, man, once you become a senior, you should come out and go straight to the league. Really? And, and he introduced me to to Kobe, and we were chopping it up, and Sonny, Sonny said, hey, this kid right here, he was talking to me about him. He said, this kid right here, he's going to the league, and he's going to change the world. I was like, all right, man. Like, Kobe Bryant. But when, when you're 16, 17 years old, and yeah, he's talking yeah, about yeah. another dude who's 17, 18 years old, he's like, man, get the fuck out of here. I'm better than him, whatever. <laughs> he's my friend. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. But, <laughs> I'm with you. Because <laughs> I had never seen him play, and back then, we didn't really have, we didn't have no internet in the hood. We didn't have cell phones and nothing like that. So internet. you don't really be hearing about it. <laughs> <clears throat> Unless you see the dudes playing at all these tournaments, so yeah. I heard a little bit about him, but I never met him. Right, right. And next thing you know, that next year you get drafted by Charlotte. I'm like, Damn me. all right. And, and of course, on on draft day, Charlotte trades him from Vlade Divac to L.A. And I'm like, whoa. So he's out in L.A. He's out in L.A. When I'm out at Pepperdine. And, and in Malibu, and he would come. He would come and, and shoot at the gym sometime. He shot. He actually shot a commercial at our at our gym one time. Really? But we remembered each other. We remember seeing each other. So well, everybody time. remember when they see Tall Paul, man. You ain't you ain't just your average guy you see walking the streets. It ain't like you walk down the street and see me. You're like, oh yeah, he looked like uh whoever. You can name twenty people, but it's like one <laughs> Tall Paul. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, you can go on, go on. But the crazy thing he remembered. Like, That's what I said. That's what I'm saying. I told, I told you. I told you. You should have came. You should. Out, you should have went. You should have went pro. <laughs> <Should've> went. <laughs> so, so then fast forward my senior year. He, he used to come to game or two, or whatever. But then fast forward to my senior year, I'm coming out 
and he was like, all right, look, man, uh, I, I would do workouts at their facility. He's like, just come on, just come on and look, man, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of you. Come play with us. Cause I went undrafted. I was like, well, no, I got a good deal. I think going with the Clippers. So I went to play with the Clippers. And of course that's the bootleg team in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Playoff P, right? Playoff P the star. It ain't Kawhi. It's playoff P. He the star. <laughs> third championship in a row in the chat wow. and he, he sees me again he's like I told you you should have came and played with us I'm like fuck I know man then the next year I go play with again with their rivals the Kings and he just, every time he would see me he just shake his head I'm like man fuck you yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can dig it I can dig it man I can yeah, dig man, it that one that one that one hit like I, I was still to this day. Well, the reason, the main reason I asked you is because I know, I know for sure, I know for sure that y'all knew each other. I knew that, and I also know for sure how much you and him, and I don't even know him, but I know just by the pictures, I know for sure how much he loved his girls, and I know how much you love your family, your girls. Yeah. You see what yeah. I'm saying? And and yeah. and and to to leave some and leave with one had to be traumatizing for for any so when Kobe died for me man it was crazy because uh it felt like deja vu it was scary it's like man I what that ain't real I've or I've seen it before it's like ah that ain't real whatever 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 but this is before this is 2020 ladies and gentlemen this is before the pandemic this is when we this is when if you look at the the paper is China with the coronavirus Kobe dying in the same paper. All we saw was Kobe. January, January uh, 26. And the thing is, is that, you know, he died a day after his oldest, oh, excuse me, not a day, a week after his oldest daughter's birthday. And didn't so know Kobe, that either. I didn't know Kobe that. Had, Kobe had four daughters. I got four daughters. Yes. And man, and still to this day, like, I thought I was, you know, when somebody who's supposed to die is you, you cry, cry, cry. And I hadn't seen him in years. But just the other day, on New Year's Day, ESPN was playing uh, the Heroes and Hope and, you know, stuff from 2020 yeah. doing this whole montage. Right, and right. started playing this stuff. And dude, I just started falling. It's just, you know, that's how impactful it was. I remember when my oldest daughter was born and, you know, uh, you know, when you have your first child, I'm in college, so I'm like, man, I can't make it to this workout. Well, so 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 this is a motivational podcast, and I want to motivate everybody in 2021 to do what they need to do right. to get it done. So tell them how old you were when you had your first daughter. I was 22. I had just turned 22. I was a I was going into my last year of college. This was the year. This was 2000. So imagine this. This was a. This was. 2001, we had, my daughter was born on August 8th, and then just a little bit more than a month later, 9-11 happened, mm -hmm. right? And so you, you're wondering what kind of world you're bringing a child into. It wasn't 9-11, 20, was it? I'm just, me I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> that was, that 2020 was, like, was rough, man. I just didn't know. Boy, that's what it <laughs> felt like. But yeah, man, you just keep pushing, keep going through it, man. But, yeah, that's what. So I just wanted people to know that because as a student athlete with a brand new baby, I think you even had a brand new wife. Yeah, your brand new wife. Brand new uh, that's 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 gangster, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, but it didn't create any excuses either. So but go ahead, no. go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 no excuses. <laughs> and I remember telling, I was talking to Kobe about it. I was like, man, it's tough, and he couldn't understand. He was like, man, you know, we gotta work out, we gotta ball, we gotta. I was like, okay. Then he has his daughter the next year. He said, man, I totally get it. I, I totally understand what it's like to have a little one. And and then, he, and then the funniest thing, then he said, I still ain't work. I, I still ain't missing no damn workouts, though. And die laughing. We just die laughing. <laughs> yeah, man. Man, that's what's up, man. Twenty twenty was uh was 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 intense, man. And we. We gonna we gonna talk about it, enjoy it too, celebrate it, man. We gonna celebrate it, man. So I want to talk about this quarantine action. Yes. I want to talk about like 
like how people don't understand, myself included, how that could be positive. People, <laughs> it is negative too. It's negative because it created a lot. Like it opens people's eyes. Like the blind shall see. All that man. Like the quarantine was 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 crazy. So I remember though the first yeah, one though. You ever seen nothing. In your life. So it was like immediately after I, I kind of got over COVID, they was like, hey, everybody dying of this disease, this uh, coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever, whatever. This is before it reached Tennessee. Mm-hmm. So we all had to work laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all crazy. Y'all <laughs> coronavirus. So they making songs, coronavirus. It's yeah. getting real. That's that would happen twenty twenty. That was the first quarantine though. That's when it was getting real. That's when March, we was, was we was making fun of. It was March twelfth. <laughs> March twelfth. Wow. It was, it was like a week, a little bit more than a week after my birthday. So I just yeah, that's right. <laughs> and then nine days later, they like, hey, everybody go home, <laughs> stay home, don't come back. I'm like, okay. <laughs> In my commute, I drive a long way to work, so I was like, "All right, cool. I get to save some gas money for my." Yeah, you thinking weeks. like me? <laughs> you thinking like me? You thinking like me? And then nine months later, I'm like, "Man, let me get the hell out of the house, bro!" I'm like, "Come on, dog." So, so you said nine months later. So we still in March, right? April, whatever, May, whatever it was. So I know when I got the first call for the quarantine, I was in stride. But 2020, boy, I would have if 2020. Was what it was supposed to be. If we would, if Obama was twenty twenty, his last year was twenty twenty, I would have been already famous. Cause I went in the, I went into that quarantine bullet. You're famous. You're nah, I mean, nah, I mean, I'm all oh, man. You know, I'm just saying money's like my sheet I showed you. Hold on, put up again to motivate y'all one more time. It's a million dollars a year, and then you see the breakdown for the month, the day, and the week, and all that. You see it's it. It's over two thousand dollars a day. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, but if if the first quarantine would have been, would have been what it should have been, oh, cause, cause I came into it, man. So, and man, I was I was I was just coming off the show, so I was climbing the scale. So, 2019, I ended it like, now I'm gonna do what I say I'm gonna do. That was my goal, my resolution, right. if that's what you call it. Right. I'm gonna do everything I say I'm gonna do, and you know how long I've been talking about doing a bodybuilding show. Black Hulk. Yeah. So yeah, you know how long. So I did it. So I'm coming up off the show and I'm climbing the scale, but muscle is fuller, tighter, bigger. Everything's going great for me. Right. First quarantine hit. This is in 2020. Yep. First quarantine hit. I'm like, shoot, this is a great opportunity. So I hit the ground running. I'm still climbing, though, as far as like motivation, trying, not trying, working on getting it done, all that. Right. Doing it. Doing it. Doing it. Right. Yep. And. <laughs> We go back to work. <laughs> we go back to work. <laughs> we go back to work. <laughs> so, so I'm still thinking it's a joke. Coronavirus is a joke. That's what I was thinking. Fast forward, we back on quarantine. Kind of, it's not locked down like it was then, but there, like, if you should know, you should be careful. By now, exactly. Cause Tennessee, I'm telling you, cause we wow. we climbing the map. We climbing the map. Man, Atlanta, all the clubs, you know, they put a pool. They put a swimming pool. What y'all number ten in the club? Oh man, we high. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's Georgia, and Tennessee doing this back and forth, boy. You know how close the states is. That's how close the race is for number one. <laughs> I think Los Angeles is number one now, but Georgia is going to be right behind. The D folks are down for D folks down here. You think it was 98 out here or something? Freak me. They, they put a swimming pool in the club. Wow. And it was like hundreds of people just, all right, y'all, let's get. I'm like, no. That's but not is the mask on in the, in the pool? No, no. In the swimming pool? No, 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 no. That's not how our people do that. Our people don't even swim. <laughs> But we gonna put a swimming pool in the club, <laughs> DJ and everything, throwing beach balls and popping bottles. That's all they doing, dog. Man, man, that's what's, up. man, that's what's up, man. So, that's it for you. so another another big thing that happened in 2020 because I want to 
I'm laughing at that, but I'm laughing to keep him crying because that junk is so real. I didn't think when I saw Kobe pass that I'd be wearing a mask in 2021 on my face and had been wearing it most of 2020. I would think the day I walked into a bank with a mask on, it's time for Jesus <laughs> to bring me home because it's not me. Because if I'm walking in the bank like this, <laughs> I'm like, wait, y'all. So how secure is the bank? To the, the bank. Y'all need to talk to the bank about this virus. Because <laughs> you walking in with the kryptonite at the bank. <laughs> the mask is the kryptonite. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, wow. But, uh, but uh, so a, a cool thing that kind of popped, not kind of, I see that's another thing in 2021. I'm getting rid of them kindas and trying. Ain't no kinda or trying. <laughs> I'm getting rid of all that. That's gone. Man, that's gone, man. You told me that a long time ago, man. My other, my other homeboy told me that too. That, it's, I, and I throw it in. But you told me when I was rapping, man, I remember I used to be wanting to rap. That was before 2020. Let me tell you a quick story. And uh, I remember you, because I used to be like, that there killer. You be like, you don't need all that. That there is the killer. <laughs> you know? I'm trying to tell him everything I need to say on the mic. But anyway, that's another story. So speaking of mics and, 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 and putting it down on wax, it's like um, 2020 started what's called a versus where you watch the concert on your phone for your, those that may not know. Change the game, I think. Change the whole game. Cause it's, I think it's that'll keep going. It'll keep going. I think that's a. I think it's a place for it with concerts. I it's think it's still a place like, for oh, it. Once we open back up, they gonna have like live versus concerts, and I really think you are gonna have it in stadiums like fifty thousand seaters to see your two favorite artists just be on stage at the same time, go back and forth. Wow, that's hard. But the the most the most anticipated the most the best versus battle of them all came from Atlanta, Georgia. Came right from the A, baby. You already know. You already know. <laughs> Jesus, and Snowman and Gucci, Icy. Woo. What's crazy to me is Woo. your boy, T.I., dropped the ball on that because he was on the ticket first. I don't think he dropped the ball, man. Talk to me. Talk to me about that before we get into that, that battle. Because... In my opinion, if you think about it, Tip could have gone against either one of them. I think as far as his catalog goes, he would still beat out Jeezy. Because Jeezy has more like club radio hits. Gucci has hits for the hood. Like, mm. so, so Gucci fan, like I'm a Gucci, I'm a fan of both of them. But Gucci got like hood Bangers. Jeezy got something too from his earlier albums, but now. No, that the Jeezy, the most hood. Talk about corporate jargon. We were talking about that yeah, earlier, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Jeezy is corporate but jargon. I think Tip, <laughs> but I think Tip catalog would have would have got both of them, right? Wow, you think but that? You hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Would have got both of them. Would have got both of them. From I'm like dog, from I'm serious. Like I ain't even talking about. I leave trap music. I'm talking about start with I'm serious. Come on, dog. And then coming from Atlanta, Jeezy and Gucci made more sense, and I think Tip saw that. Oh, so you think that you think I now understand what you're saying. You think it was Tip paying homage to the city. He know what the most entertainment is, and he and he got a cut. Yeah, well, is that what yeah, you're saying? He, Timberland and, and Swiss somebody holler at him and say, hey, man, I think we can get Gucci to go at Gene City for all. I want to watch that. Like, if I was to... And I'm took the money? I don't know if you heard me. Oh, took the money? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, okay, 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 okay. We don't know nothing about that. 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 So, 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 so... From a fan perspective, seeing... Seeing Jeezy and Gucci go at it, so this, I appreciate it. Man. Well, so this this podcast is all about positivity. Don't they'll ever get it twisted. It's all right. this podcast is about positivity. Right. And uh, Jeezy and Gucci Mane show the <laughs> most positivity I've seen in a long time. Like you got one trying to kill another one's partner, one that did kill another one's partner. 
They clearly, they, it, they don't, they still do not like each other. And they came together and got the job done. What Young, young Buck said this, let's get money now. We can fall out later. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey. And the thing about it is, man, they lost so many years on it. And, and just to clarify, you know, it was Jeezy's partner, Pookie. He, he acted on his own accord. And that's what Jeezy had been trying to get clear with Gucci. Like, hey, man, I didn't send nobody. But, I mean, from the hood, and you see your homeboy's partner coming at you. You think your homeboy got something to do with it because, like, y'all roll together. And this is, like, one of your underbosses. This is your partner. So... Gucci, rightfully so, thinking, okay, this man who I got a song with, and we already had an argument over who album Ice So Ice was going to be on. And you thinking that, you know, brother's trying to put a hit out on you. So, yeah. yeah they, and no, I mean, I how, get it. You saw how Gucci came out. He was guns blazing. You knew it was going to play. Direct shots. But Jeezy, though, Jeezy said, he. I'm just going to say this. He didn't say this, but this is what he said. Yeah. <laughs> Save your ammo. Don't waste it. Got them dodging bullets like they in the Matrix. Bro. Damn. To see them come together. At yeah, the it, was hard. Of, it was hard. It was hard. It was, it was hard, man. It, the whole thing was hard. It was a great production. It was great to show young black men, young white men, young men that you can come to get you. You ain't got to kill somebody you hate, man. Let them live. Just don't fool with them. If there's some money involved, get the money. Don't fool with them no money. more. Like, you can do all of, of that. And just stay out of the way, money yeah. Stay out of the way. Yeah, yeah, Cause yeah. Because they could have made so much money together. Oh. <clears throat> like, they've already made a whole lot of money. Oh, yeah, money yeah, yeah, time. yeah, yeah. It's debatable which one the yeah, best. I, I personally like Jeezy better. Who you got? Gucci Jeezy. Well, not on the versus battle. Not on the versus battle. I ain't asking for versus battle. Who you got, Atlanta, Gucci or Jeezy? Atlanta and me say Gucci. Okay, enough said. Man. But but the <laughs> album that I love the most, like from both of them, was that, that Trap or Die. Oh my god! <laughs> that Trap or Die <laughs> that. I'm the realest thing ever. <laughs> you already know. Uh, I lost it. I was, you know how you can you can cast stuff from your phone to your TV? Yeah. But we had it on the TV and me and wifey were, were listening to the songs. So what you talking about? The song or what you talking about? The verses from, oh, from so, the phone. So you got the verses from your phone to your See, we over here struggling, cuz. You can't see, man. See, this is what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen. You can get started on your dreams without knowing how to do nothing. I'm shooting a podcast and put it everywhere, but I couldn't get the versus battle from my phone to my TV. I couldn't do it. I could not do it. I couldn't do it. It was some songs I jumped out the bed. Me and wife was in the bedroom dancing. Boy, we were rocking. Really? Yeah. That's what's up. Man, well, I don't want to keep y'all night, man. You know we're going to get back together because CNC Sports coming soon, man. CNC about Sports job, coming soon. Um, 2020, job. man, you know, mass, uh, a lot more than that happened, a lot more. We, there's a lot of senseless killings um, that's been going on before 2020, but it, it really got highlighted in 2021. I even felt like we came together for the first one, but then I think we advertised it too much after that. I'm not saying that you should even have to advertise black killings. That's not what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is the first one, showed everybody that we that we are nuts and losing our mind by everybody i mean the whole united states of america people human race um but then we lost we totally derailed and tried to sell it as as a as a product in my opinion give your quick opinion if you don't care quick opinion yeah, man, i mean like the fact that we know that one we are killing each other as a people has got to stop but then we also acknowledge that uh, there is brutality, police brutality, the killing, the unnecessary killing of African Americans in this country, and it's been happening. It's been going on. I think that the fact that we did have the lockdown due to the coronavirus and COVID accentuated it, heightened it, and we hit a boiling point. So even during, you know, the, the uptick of coronavirus, you saw black folks, white folks. 
protesting in the street against police brutality. <clears throat> and then, you know, you got people saying, well, these folks were innocent or, or the police who did it were innocent. It's like, come on, bro. Like, if you murder somebody, you murder somebody. Murder is murder. the fact that white and black could come together just like the civil rights movement, I yeah. saw open that. But what was discouraging is it's the same protest that we were doing were doing like we did during the civil rights movement. Yeah, so even yeah. after, you know, oh, yeah. five decades, you, you still don't see much, much change yeah. in that aspect. Yeah, yeah, I can dig that. I can dig that. But uh, so yeah, LeBron, yeah, Le- LeBron, LeBron James made a uh, made what yeah, I thought the the Kane, the Kane, yeah, Kane, yeah, yeah, Kane, Kane, yeah, Kane, Kane, Reigns, Reigns, four only four, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, he he spearheaded that and uh, did something that I thought was really good because a lot of people discredited the bubble. But he did it anyway. Yep. So, so my question is, since the bubble was so easy. What? No, nah, I'm just saying that's what they say on the big networks. I don't have no viewers. So I can say what I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so since the easy part is over, no traveling, no groupies, no, no money, no nothing, just the bubble. No even wife. You didn't even have a wife to the finals, I think. And I know I'm wrong. But it's like soon though, it's soon into the finals. It wasn't like every team had their wife there. Yeah, yeah. So 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 since it was so easy, <laughs> so easy. <laughs> Who you got in twenty twenty one to win the NBA championship? Oh, I still, I still got. I got yeah, see, so we had this conversation already. I'm just throwing. I just want to hear it. I got, it, the, so I got the Kane. I got the Lakers. I think the Lakers are going to end up playing. Um. Brooklyn, if they can get their act together, because yeah. I do respect Kyrie and KD's talent. I think you need one of them, and I think KD will end up stepping up as the leader of that team. Then you got LeBron, AD, and the squad. Man, I'm telling you, come, come after Valentine's. Watch it just start getting real. It's gonna get nasty. I got no faith in the Clippers. No, no faith. Playoff P. Hey, how let me, man. Teach me how to get that check in 2020, man. You can show me specifically how you con <laughs> artist people in, or how you con artist yourself into that contract. Show me specifically, because I can hoop too, man. You don't have to shoot me to get a bucket. I ain't going to score nothing. But if you're going to score, you're going to have to pull out the nine. We're going to have to go into depth on that on the next episode. Yeah. Because, boy. Yeah, CNC is coming back, baby. We coming back. Let's do that, man. Let's do that. We 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 hey we we solidifying it here, man. We we yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. CNC Sports. So since we still on sports and we are gonna get out of here in just a second. Um, NFL. My Bears are in against New Orleans. Ooh, after a loss to Green Bay and a dude on the internet talking crazy about uh about how the Packers beat uh the Bears. And I was like, ooh, if they play again, we gonna win. It's almost like he was playing Nagy was playing uh what they call it chicken. Not chicken. Uh what what you say when you slacking? Uh when you pl- when you possum. possum. I think the Bears were playing possum. Cause I didn't understand how to read how you get into the playoffs, but the coach did. <laughs> And and I think the coach knew that. He was like, We ain't gonna beat you, Green Bay. Y'all better call off the dogs. Y'all better call off y'all better just take this loss. And 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 Green Bay wouldn't do it. They showed their hand. I think we in there, ladies and gentlemen. I got Super Bowl champs. I got Bears versus my homeboy. Bears Super Bowl champs, baby. 2021. And and I know where it's at in Tampa. I'm going to the beach house. We got a little beach house. We stay down there all the time. Man, because we're going to the beach house and we're going to the parking lot of the Super Bowl. We're going to be there in the parking lot. Turned up. If that happens, I'll roll with you. I'm telling you, that is so far fetched thinking, dog. You know, good and well, the Panthers. I tell you, I got my homeboy, so I got Kansas City just like you got. But I got Old Faithful, man, that dude down in Tampa Bay who's just 
Oh, or some people call it Tampa Bay now. <laughs> Brady is 43 years old and threw 43 touchdowns or like 42 touchdowns this year. It's crazy. Wow. Now, I know Aaron Rodgers threw 48. He should win MVP this year. 48 touchdowns, five interceptions. It's stupid. Yeah, because <laughs> the year he won MVP, I think in two twenty eleven, it was forty five touchdowns and six interceptions. Some put forty eight and five. Is stupid. Yeah, but Brady, man, come on, dog. Now, hopefully, Mike Evans prayers out to him that he uh, gets healthy, that he just has that that knee sprain, and they can get him back. It looked bad though. It looked bad. It did look bad. It looked terrible. Yeah, it looked bad. But it didn't look. It didn't look permanent to me though either. It didn't look permanent. No, it's just a, they they did the MRIs just in each brain. So I got Kansas City, Tampa Bay, and I got Kansas City repeat. First team to do it since New England did in what 13, 14, something like that. Fourteen. Wow! 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 Well, <laughs> that's that's what's up. That's what we're going with. Hey. <laughs> I think you're going to be coming to Tampa is what I think going to happen. <laughs> That's what I think going to happen. That's what I think going to happen. I think me, I think me, you, and all the fam, we going to Tampa. And I got, like I said, I got the spot. We're going to stay. And we good. And we good. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man. So, man, we're going to get back together, man. We're going to chop it up. Uh, I appreciate. So, I want to leave everybody with this. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be hard, meaning, you're going to mess up a lot in the beginning when you're doing anything new. I don't care if it's running. I don't care if it's baking cakes. I don't care if it's uh, lighting. I don't care if it's painting. I don't care if it's flipping houses or doing podcasts. Um, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. And uh, what, I'm, what I'm learning is if you let the mistakes even affect your energy, you already lost. Right. I'm going to put it on the screen again. These people that's making this million dollars, and this 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 19k a month them people them people mess up so much all man the time. <laughs> all the time and uh that's that's just going to happen so if that's what people are meaning when they're saying they're not going to tell you specifically how to make it what they're saying is you're going to have to learn to deal that's the first step i can tell you that as somebody broke i'll give you that that's free game that's not even game from the whip that's free game you're going to mess up. You, If you mess up, you, you, I mean, if you quit, then you're done. Short memory in life, man. That's just, that's not just any, that's not anything. That's life. That's, that's anything. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm going to let my man, Tall Paul, tell us about how he got the name Tall Paul. And then tell us, and then tell us where he can find us and, and leave us with something, man. Yeah, brother, so. Episode 60, by the way. Hashtag I am who I am podcast. Yes, sir. So I'm 13 years old. You know, going into high school, and I'm, I'm naturally tall, right? So black people in Atlanta love for things to rhyme. Now, as, as Chad and I already said, my government name is Cedric, but Cedric don't rhyme with tall. So the first name that black people uh, could think of was Paul. And I have been tall, Paul, to this day for the last... Like since then, since I was 13 <laughs> years old, dog, and it stuck. People to this day still call me that all over the city, all over the world, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you can find me at Tall Paul Shouted at IG. You know what I'm saying? I don't really do Facebook now, that, but at Tall Paul Shouted on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? I'll let him give me a shout. We talk sports and all that, man. And then for, for 2021, you know, let's get it. I love the progress that my brother Chad has been making with the podcast. Like you said, I was there from the very beginning. Day one, ladies and time. gentlemen. Like, he didn't ask any questions. No, we just jump right just jump right in and let's do it. So I love the progression and what he's taught me and what he's taught hopefully all of y'all out there is, man, just jump out there and do it. Just whatever you got your mind to, whatever you want to do in your life, you know, it's called a leap of faith for a reason. So have faith in a higher purpose, a higher being, if you if you think that way, which I do. And have faith in yourself. Believe in yourself. And I don't care what we're going through, what, what pandemic is going on, who we've lost, regardless of all of those circumstances, it's always going to be something. But if you, if you believe in yourself and really want to make something happen, I'm telling you, you can, you can do that. 
So salute to everybody who does, man. That's what's up. And this is somebody that continues to achieve dreams that you're hearing that from, ladies and gentlemen. Like, he achieved all, most black men I know childhood dream was to go to the NFL or the NBA, and then you had that small percentage that was the MLB. Black men I knew. And for you to be one of the men that actually made it to that point, man, I don't give a care if you scored 40 points a game, 55 rebounds, or just came to the game to holler at uh, Kobe, uh, I mean, uh, Kobe fans, and or whatever the case may be. I don't care if you ever played a minute or you was the man. You made it. You, you did what literally 100% of black men that I knew as a kid, black men, that's all I'm speaking for on that, 100%. Every one of our dreams was the NBA, and the only ones, the ones, the only ones that didn't say it was the the, the uh, kids that had parents at the house that totally crushed their dream from the beginning. Taught them early, do not say that. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. But it was a hundred percent that wanted to be there. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. But uh, man, I really appreciate you doing this for me. Uh, like I said earlier, we had to redo the podcast. I know that sounds crazy. Y'all thinking maybe we wrote it down or maybe we rehearsed this or whatever. But no, nah, it wasn't nothing like that. The fact of the matter was I made a mistake. And that's what you're going to do in the business game. It doesn't matter what business it is. You're going to make mistakes. But just keep going. You got to have a short memory. Who cares? Who cares? You wouldn't have knew it if I wouldn't have told you. I just wanted to tell you, let you know, 2021, man, come on. Let's go. I'm going to put it on screen one more time. Episode 60, baby. Look, see the numbers? See the numbers? But this is the hashtag I am who I am podcast episode 60. Shout out to Tall Paul, Cedric Seward for being a return guest and yes, being sir. there from day one with me, man. Yes, sir. You know it. For sure, for sure. But like I said, we got plenty of stories, but y'all got to pay for them. <laughs> but as always, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend, thumbs up, everything, tell wherever everybody. you at. Tell everybody. Yeah. And as always, I'll be back. G. <laughs> Hey, CNC Sports coming back, baby. Freak. <laughs>